Don't make emotional decisions when you're in love. Don't make decisions when you're in love. That's one of the most important things that I've ever said. And it was something that I said maybe 10 years ago. Don't trust a man that's in love. Don't trust yourself when you're in love. When you're in love and you're feeling that, that passion, you're feeling that lust, you're feeling that excitement, you're feeling those butterflies in your belly, that's when you don't do anything. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot. I'm from India and I moved to the US in order to go to school. But when I got here, my girlfriend from back home wanted me to come back and marry her. So I did. I left the US, I left my school, I went back home. And right before learning about, or right before I got with my girlfriend again, she left me for another guy. My first question is how do I unburden myself for my ex's betrayal? Well, sometimes you have to go through pain, bro. Sometimes you have to have these experiences. And in retrospect, you will be grateful for it because they teach you something. There's nothing I could do to soothe your heart or make you feel better about it. What you've got to do is use this as a opportunity to be awake, be aware, maybe not make the same decision again or make the same mistake again, but also not be bitter about your decision or not to beat yourself up about it, or to have that rage where now you can't trust anybody. The whole idea here is that challenges in life make you stronger, right? Like the same thing, I always use the gym as an analogy, right? If I go to the gym and I'm not struggling against the weight, if I don't, if I don't have resistance, let me put it that way, right? This is a form of resistance in your life. If I have no resistance in the gym, I don't grow stronger. If you have no resistance in your life, you don't grow stronger. This is just one of those things that add resistance to your life, but it's designed to help you overcome. Overcome wrong thinking, overcome unresourceful emotions, overcome manipulation, overcome all the, the uh, thinking errors that got you in this place to begin with, man. And look, I understand that you were, you were doing everything from a clean place from a genuine place, you made a decision based on love and it backfired, it backfired. There's, there's, there's nothing that I can say that will ease that pain. What you have to do is go through that pain. You gotta suffer through that pain. You have to allow that pain to press on you so that you can fight back and grow stronger, right? I got a real, one of my most popular videos on my Strength Camp channel is called Lift That Shit or Die Trying. I suggest you go watch it. And in the video, I talk about all of life's challenges are like plates that are thrown onto a barbell, right? And, you know, ultimately, if I'm going to be a man, you're going to be the man that you, you, you know you can be, you're meant to be, just keep piling those plates on. Pile those plates on and lift that shit or die trying. Don't grow animosity towards women in general because this is, you know, although there's a trend of betrayal, particularly in your generation, it doesn't mean that, dare I say, all women are like that, or better yet, all of your experiences are going to be that way, right? So you can use that as motivation. You can use that as resistance for the overcoming, for the strength that is growing in your character in life. Allow it to be positive. Allow it to be something that teaches you rather than drags you down, right? Feel the grief. Feel the pain. Cry if you need to, right? But you get, but once you have mourned, you got to move on, right? Don't look back. Don't have hard feelings. Don't turn bitter, right? But at the same time, don't be stupid. Don't make the same mistake again. Be a little bit more discerning. You know, I was reading this uh, Instagram. I found it. I, I go on Instagram and like I, I have certain people that I follow and I look at people that they follow, and I found one. I like to find these like uh, these trad women. I find these trad women on Instagram and on TikTok that talk about being traditional women, and they teach women how to be feminine again, and how not to take advantage of, or how to be the best that they could be for uh, men in their lives. And uh, so today, I was, today I was looking at one, and uh, damn, I forget what I was going to say. Don't let it. Don't beat yourself up, and don't let it. Don't let it uh, beat you down. You got to just use this as something to make you stronger to move on. Uh, and the second thing is 
My pursuit to move back to the U.S., is it realistic? Should I stick to the plan I'm already on? Should I motivate myself to be on this path? I also want to be worthy of contributing to the U.S. and not beat the bush. So that part is quite vividly clear in my mind. Keep your mind on the prize. Keep your eyes on the prize, but do what's in front of you. I say that all the time to the guys in this program. Focus on what you got in front of you. Do the best you can with what you got. Don't pick up and do anything drastic. The same way that you picked up. Oh, now I remember what I was going to say. The same way that you picked up and moved. Uh, you don't. You don't need to do that with the situation that you're in right now because it's it's about being emotional. Here's what I was going to say. Now I remember. Um, this lady was talking about how men and women they love differently, and that it's okay for women to be emotional about their love. It's okay for women to be emotional in their decisions about love, how they how they are with their partner or the things that they do, you know, picking up and leaving uh, is something that a woman who's in love would do, right? But at the same time, she said, allow men to live the way or love the way that men love. And the way men love is a more of a quiet, discerning love. We're not so erratic. We're not so spontaneous in our love. We're a little bit more tempered. We're a little bit more measured. And it's better for us to be that way as men. We live in a world where they teach us to behave like women. And it feels good to behave like a woman because there's chaos. Chaos feels good in a way because there's no restraint. And when there's no restraint, there's a sense of being free. It's a false freedom, right? No restraint and chaos is a false freedom. But the world makes you think it's free. I'm free to do whatever I want. But yes, you, you, you're living in chaos. And the way for men to live in chaos, the way for a man to, to behave chaotically is to allow his, motion, his emotions to rule him. Don't make emotional decisions when you're in love. Don't make decisions when you're in love. That's one of the most important things that I've ever said. And it was something that I said maybe 10 years ago. Don't trust a man that's in love. Don't trust yourself when you're in love. When you're in love and you're feeling that, that passion, you're feeling that lust, you're feeling that excitement, you're feeling those butterflies in your belly, that's when you don't do anything. <laughs> that's when you sit with it. That's when you allow it to just acknowledge it, allow it. And allow it to circulate. I started noticing this in myself also too, right? Like I'm married, right? I'm not, and so I lust my wife. I have lustful feelings for my wife. And now that I'm practicing semen retention, there are a lot of times where like I'll feel this, I'll feel the movement in my body like, oh man, I just want to, I, I, I would do, I want to do everything to her right now. I want to eat her all up. In the past, when I wasn't controlling my urges, when I wasn't master of my domain, I would just... Hey, babe, like, this, this is it right here. Let's go, right? But these days, I sit with it. I sit with the lust. I sit with the passion. And I just breathe through it. I notice it. And you know what I notice? I start paying attention to where I feel it in my body. I start to notice that, like, wow, if, here's what happens to me when I start feeling lustful for my wife. It moves up into my heart and then into my salivary glands. I feel like there's warmth in my heart. I feel like a movement in my heart. And then I literally feel my salivary glands start to water. And that's like an indication that the passion, the lust, the, the emotion of sex starts moving in my body. Notice that with yourself also, right? Whether you're, you're dealing with a woman flesh and bone or even if you're dealing with her over the phone. Because, it's, because for men, sex stimul is stimulated through the imagination, right? And so you love this woman you, and, you, and you want to get back to those warm feelings in your heart. And if you're anything like me that... That salivary gland feeling like I just want to eat you. Like literally, I just want to eat my wife. That's the worst time to make any decisions. That's the, in fact, that's the worst time to have sex. This is just from my experience. The worst time to have sex is when I'm really craving it because that means I have no control over it. I much rather put it on a leash, have it under my control, just like my dog, right? Like my dog, I have to put my dog on a leash and a prong collar so that I'm in mm -hmm. control when I deal with him, right? So if he starts barking and he starts acting up or, he you know, he wants to go do something crazy because he's a dog, I have him on that leash and I just pop him once. Bop. Hey, cease, relax, wait, right? We got to be that way with our emotions. When that emotion starts revving up, when that animal, when that inner dog start, starts chomping, starts barking on the inside, you literally got to take that leash to yourself and say, oh. Easy, easy, boy. Relax. Leave it. It's okay. Leave it. And the same way I do with my dog, and my dog like, okay, all right. And then he sits down, and he's like, okay, I'll leave it alone. It's the same thing with taming your passions. It's the same exact thing, and you need to be able to do that. 
We need to be able to tame our passions. Otherwise, we're going to make all kinds of ungrounded decisions like flying across the world, giving up all these opportunities. Men don't give up life opportunities for women. Women are supposed to give up their life opportunities because a man gives a woman life. Women should join a man's life. A man doesn't join a woman's life. You flying back to go deal with her means that you go going to live her life and you see what happens. That If there's one thing that you learn from this, I would say is this. Do not chase a woman. Do not go after a woman. Do not join a woman's life. It's my life. You get to join it. That's a perspective all men should have because it's good for men to behave that way and women love it. Feminism taught them that they should be in charge, but women do respect men that aren't in charge. Women don't respect men that chase them. That's why she left you. She knew she had you as putty in her hand, and so she took you for granted. Eh. Right? Don't let that happen again by controlling your emotions and controlling your frame, your space. That's so key. Now, uh, so I'm happy that I remember what that, what that meme was about. It's about loving the way a man loves. And the world doesn't teach men to love that way. The world teaches men how to love through Disney, right? Through cartoons, through pop culture, the music. If you listen to the music, especially love songs, men who make, write and sing love songs are so pathetic. It's so sad. It's so sad to hear these men. They really turn women into a god. Do not turn women into a god, right? The way they sing and they croon and they swoon and they'll do anything for you. Even if you feel that way, even if you have that sense within you, you don't say it. You don't sing it, right? You retain it, right? Semen retention is the same as emotional retention. Men must retain their power. That's what men do. They retain power and modulate it, right? A man who is like angry all the time, right? Even dare I say a wife beater, right? Which I don't think there's as many as the world makes it out to be, right? Oh, you know, any man who's, you know, got muscles and testosterone and is aggressive is probably a wife beater. People say that about me. Like, oh, he probably beats his wife. This one guy commented on Facebook, said, I feel sorry for his wife. These people are so dumb. They don't recognize that a real alpha male modulates his, his, his emotions. He has a lot of strength, a lot of power, a lot of aggression, but he knows how to use it rightly. And so I encourage you to do that. I encourage, and that's with your sexual emotion, that's with your anger emotion, lust emotion, happiness emotion. Don't get too happy. That's another one, right? Don't get too happy. Don't get too joyful and passionate about stuff. Feel it coming in your body. Feel it happening in your body. Recognize the physiological moves within your body, but it doesn't mean you have to move. It doesn't mean you have to do anything. You got to sit with it. My dog wants to go and bite somebody. I'm not going to make him not want to bite. He still wants to fucking bite. He still wants to bark, but poop, fooey, quiet. And he stops. He still got it in his mind. It's still in his body. He still wants to go, but he won't. Why? Because he's under the domain of a master. My dog has a master. You have a master too. This is your master. Don't let this be your master. I know the world tells you otherwise. I know I've said otherwise, but I've made mistakes and I've seen it all over the place when men allow their emotions to guide them. Don't. Be practical with women. Be rational with women. Be stoic with women and let her join your frame. Now, once again, and, and this is along the same lines, you want to, now that, you know, shit hit the fan and you lost your opportunity here in the U.S., you're back in India, you're wondering, should I, should I, should I go back, right? And you said that they tried to go back, but they rejected you. That's a sign to stop being effeminate. That's a sign to stop chasing your fields. Right now, you want to come back here because of some emotion, some feeling, some ungrounded movement in your body. Notice it. Acknowledge it. Respect it, but let it be. Leave it alone and do what's in front of you. Do your in India, do the Indian thing hardcore. Pass all your tests, uh, get a 4.0, be the top in your class, be amazing at what you do, fill up that space so that when the opportunity arises, 
you're prepared, you're ready to make a move if you need to. Right now you can't. Right now you can't. There's nothing you could do. So what are you going to do? Be depressed. Wallow in your sadness. Be anxious and try to make it happen. Force it angrily. None of that. None of that will help. You got the throne, bro. You got to sit cool, be cold, do the best you can. And then life unfolds. Life unfolds very beautifully. And you'll be all right, dude. I hope that helps, man. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.